is about survival! Survive! Lucius is the son of Lucilla. The whole story is based on Lucius, the child, was sent away to protect him. Never let them find you. Fuck! We see him dragged back into Rome, a prisoner. Rome has taken everything from me. But I will have my vengeance. Lucius fights as a gladiator for revenge and redemption. I don't fight for power. I fight to free Rome from men like them. Acacius is the current general of Rome. He's a soldier trained by Maximus. General Acacius. There are victories yet still to come. Rome has so many subjects, she must feed them. He has been brutalized by the act of invading innocent territories. I claim this city for the glory of Rome. And there's a conscience there. He represents a moral voice within this Roman Empire. I will not waste another generation of young men for their vanity. <laughs> General Acacius, he's a soldier, not a politician. He's one for action. Rome drowns in its own blood. The Empress do not have the support of the people. Lucilla is the daughter of a former Caesar. She had to sacrifice Lucius to keep him alive. There is her utter regret that she put Rome before her son. Lucilla's deeply adored by the people of Rome. She believes that power has to be in the hands of the people. And maybe Lucius will continue this idea. Take your father's strength. His name was Maximus. And I see him in you. This is what they believe. <laughs> power. Macronism is an ex-slave who did quite well taking and intimidating. He's a billionaire, and instead of having a stable of resources, he's got a stable of gladiators. Violence is the universal language. He takes advantage of every situation. You will be my instrument. He's the puppet master. He wants to dominate and to manipulate. <laughs> Let the gods decide his fate. Let the gods decide. The power behind the throne is kept by any means necessary. The gods have rendered their judgment. Emperor Gator is a sadistic, ruthless emperor. He rules Rome alongside his fraternal twin, Emperor Caracalla. <laughs> because we're split as emperors, it enables for us to be more broken. They're motivated by fear of losing power. The Praetorians will put down this crowd like they have every other. What's the difference between evil and wicked? They were just awful, but they did it with a smile. The gods have spoken! I think Ridley would be a great emperor. If you can run a set the size of Gladiator, I think you could give it a good go running the Roman Empire as big as it is, it has to be such a controlled environment. Eight cameras, then we'll come down here and go yeah. four and four. And yet somehow, Ridley finds a way to keep it completely organic and spontaneous. Woo! All right, this is what we're gonna do now. Ridley Scott called, said, are you interested? That was enough. He's a visionary at what he sees and how he puts it together. You've got all of these moving parts happening. You've moved something all the time. And his ability to create these dynamic worlds is pretty extraordinary. Commit to doing it. You want to commit? Do it now. Yeah. Let's go again. For every challenge that the world of cinema throws up, he span analog into digital into multicam. He's done it all. Ridley creates these extraordinary characters with emotionally compelling storytelling. He amped up the spectacle even more. I was just so blown away. There's an energy on a Ridley Scott set that is thrilling. Action! It was madness. As much star quality as this movie has, the star that shines the brightest is Ridley. They killed people in the arena. 
for fun. <laughs> and that was real. There was a big focus on the physical preparation for this film. Remember why you're here! Gladiator 2, we're making history! I put these guys through hell. There was a lot of very physical training. I got my ass kicked. You can prep and prep and prep and prep, but you've still got to kind of throw that away. We wouldn't need a wire, I can take that. Do it. And also, like, whatever genius idea Ridley's gonna throw at you. I discovered that Paul's very fast and very brutal with the sword. That's crazy, right? I've had some training with swords before, but not like this. Surprised the hell out of me because he can be really violent. The attack is fucking perfect. Ridley has an extraordinary team. They're absolutely committed. Pedro and Paul got beat up by the best. I'm incredibly proud of the finished product. It's just an absolutely mad experience. This film just dials it up to 100. My hat comes off to them and what they did. Music to me is language. It's the final dialogue. It gives the film that added dynamic as and when you may need it. Here we go. Here's bar six, everybody. Six, two, three, four. Harry truly is an extraordinarily good composer. He stuns me with what he is capable of doing. The music that I've written contains elements of Hans's original Gladiator theme. Sound that can be achieved and captured here is second to none. Rudy is quite an open book when it comes to music, but he'll talk to me about light and darkness. And then I'll interpret it in a musical way. There's a good balance between big action sequences and the sort of power and nobility of the Roman Empire. This is what they believe in, power. Really, it's really up the ante here with the epic battles in the Colosseum. In the script, one line said, this moment, Lucius becomes Maximus. And I thought, what if I can create a theme for Lucius that becomes Hans's theme from the first movie? I love that he took it and just expanded it, making something which is so extraordinary. Music is a statement. It's a sound statement. And I think they're going to love it. What is the dream of Rome? That people are not free. It's been 25 years since Gladiator won. There's an excitement coming back to the Roman Empire. The first gladiator had a huge impact across the world. How does it feel? Epic. It's not lost on me what we as a cast of actors and Ridley are stepping into. Roll cameras, action! The story they came up with, it was brilliant. It speaks to a deep human experience. Where you are, I am too. At the start of the film, Rome has been through 20 years of upheaval with the madness of power-hungry people who can buy the throne. <laughs> there are victories yet still to come. Rome has so many subjects, she must feed them. They can eat war! The whole story is based on Lucy, the child who was sent away to protect him. Never let them find you. We see him dragged back into Rome, a prisoner. Whose head could I give you that would satisfy this fury? The entire Roman army. Everything that goes into creating this world is incomparable. This is the biggest film I've been on. It's huge. Cecil B. DeMille on steroids. This is about survival! Survive! All of the things that you see in the film, flooding the Colosseum, wild animals, it's recorded that all of these things happen. This is real. There's nothing like having the real thing. No, no, no. 
Everywhere you turn, there's thousands of soldiers in beautiful costumes. To walk out in that arena for the second time was pretty amazing. Boom! It's a grand in scope with sophisticated characters and storytelling. It's all the things that fill in the word epic.